Today, we're going to analyze the Melisen Psalter, a remarkable 12th century manuscript made for an even more remarkable medieval woman. What do we actually know about this manuscript? Against all odds, the original ivory covers for the Melisen Psalter survived along with the manuscript within. And what we see is that the top cover shows six circles depicting the life of the biblical King David. Here he's engaged in his heroic battle against the giant Goliath. And we have more peaceful images like this one of King David as a musician holding a lyre, which reminds us that he was often depicted as the author of the Book of Psalms. Here the ivory is following a long tradition in the Middle Ages of connecting the current ruler with the biblical king, David, as we see in this Byzantine manuscript, which is called the Paris Psalter, where David is shown hard at work composing his psalms surrounded by several personifications. The rich symbolism doesn't stop there because in between these ivory medallions with King David, the front cover shows a battle for human will, an allegorical form of virtues and vices. Here's luxuria being vanquished. Despite that warning against luxury, the manuscript found inside these ivory covers is splendidly illuminated. It has 218 folia plus several loose leaves and begins with key moments in the life of the figure of Christ, all done in the Byzantine artistic style that seemed to be favored by the aristocracy and the crusader courts for their most prestigious projects. This scene is called the harrowing of hell. It is a direct borrow from Byzantine art. It appears in many churches and it even includes a lot of the little details that are taken from the apocryphal gospels account of when Christ descended to hell. So we see the broken doors of hell at the figure of Christ's feet, for instance. Another interesting detail is that this manuscript actually has a signature by the artist who painted the 24 opening scenes. And that's a very unusual feature given that most medieval artists remained anonymous. The transfiguration scene shows that this artist was very much up to date with contemporary art trends for it closely resembles other Byzantine renderings of this scene from the New Testament. So it's a moment when Christ is written about as being transfigured, bathed in light, right before the events leading to his crucifixion. The artist even followed Byzantine traditions where the light was often at the center of aesthetics of subtly modulating the surface of the gold to show the beams of illumination radiating from Christ. The apostles, Peter, John, and James, show their astonishment in a sort of acting 101 moment. And the same exaggerated emotionalism is very typical of Byzantine art right at this time. We see it also in this 12th century scene of the Lamentation painted on a church wall in Macedonia. On the other hand, this scene of the raising of Lazarus from the dead pulls influence from both Western European and Byzantine art. It certainly looks Byzantine when we take into consideration the gold background and stylized depictions, but the way the building from which Lazarus is emerging is depicted, connects very closely to a specific sculpture in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. So that ties it to trends coming from Western Europe at the time. Our evidence tax up to indicate this manuscript was made in the workshop of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Clearly, given how lavish it is, it was also made for one of the leaders of the crusading movement. But who exactly? One important clue is that the Latin used in some of the prayers in the manuscript's text uses a feminine ending. And that's quite unusual. That further narrows our possibilities to the elite women of the crusading movement. Most scholars think it was made specifically for Queen Melisend. And here's why. Melisend was the daughter of the crusader King Baldwin II and the Armenian Queen Morphia. Because Melisend had no brothers, she became the heir presumptive to the Crusader throne and was even included in official documents issued by her father, King Baldwin II. Her parents, moreover, are mentioned in the manuscript's calendar pages, further suggesting a connection to her immediate family. 
As the heir to the Crusader throne, Melisande expected when she married Fulk to rule as equal partners following the death of her father in 1131. Instead, Fulk tried to go it alone and had some pretty disastrous results. So perhaps this manuscript was intended as a gesture to appease the brilliant Queen Melisande when in 1135, Fulk accepted that he must rule together with his queen in all matters. However, another possibility is maybe Queen Melisande commissioned it herself. Thank you.